Hi guys, this is Dr. Dalton from Hammond Chiropractic, and today I have a special video for you. I've teamed up with Topfield CrossFit in Crown Point, Indiana again, and we wanted to make a video for you about hip stretches. Now, the reason that I wanted them to help me with this was because one of our first videos that we did about proper exercise form was about squats. And when we talked about squats, we talked about the fact that most people don't have good hip flexibility, and because of that, they're not able to get fully down into that squat position. So we decided that we would put together a series of stretches that you can do at home or at the gym or wherever you're working out. And uh, what this will allow you do, to do is to over time relax the muscles around the hip so that you can get more flexibility in that hip joint and therefore you're going to get a better um, uh, effect from your squats that you're doing. Now in addition to that, these stretches can be used if you have hip problems or if you have pain in your hips. However, there's a couple things I want to say about that before we teach you these stretches. First of all, if you do have pain in your hips or if you're noticing that there's a lack of flexibility in the hips, you always want to go see your chiropractor first. And the reason for that is this. You would be shocked how many times people have hip pain and the actual cause of that hip pain is in the lower back. And the reason that that works out that way is because the nerves in your lower back, they actually come and they uh, go into the hip, all right? We call that the sciatic nerve. And from there, that nerve travels down into the legs. So you can actually feel pain anywhere along that path. It can be in the hips, it can be in the thighs and the knees, the ankles, the feet, all the way to the toes. And that problem can actually be starting in your lower back if there's any pressure on the nerves in that area, okay? So a lot of people think they have hip problems, but really they don't at all. They have low back problems. And the way that that works is this. Remember that chiropractors look for a problem called subluxation. And what that is, just real briefly, is if we look at two bones in your spine here, you can see the, how they're put together. You've got the bones on top of each other. There's a disc between every set of bones. And then back here, there's an opening created where the nerve is exiting the spine to travel out to the body. Now, sometimes what can happen is that these vertebrae can misalign, and if they do, it's going to put pressure on that nerve, and then whatever that nerve is going to is going to be affected. Now, you have to remember that the nervous system is the power source of the body. So the way that this works is, there, is that there is electricity being sent through your nerves out to all the different par body parts, and that powers everything to work properly. So if we have a subluxation or a misalignment in the lower back, you're cutting off the power to the hip and the legs. So you could feel that, but also what can happen is that it can, it can affect your function. So you can lose mobility, basically, at that point. So make sure you see your chiropractor before you do anything with this, because if you have a little back problem, you wanna make sure you're treating the problem correctly so that the hips can fully function like they're supposed to, all right? Another reason it's so important that um, you see this connection is because when you look at the muscles of the hip, there's a very, very important couple of muscles that we call the hip flexors and they actually attach into the front of your spine. The big one that I talk about a lot is called the psoas muscle but it will it, it starts at the front of your spine and then it travels up to the front of the hips and attaches there and what the job of these muscles is, is that it lifts the leg up for you so if I'm walking upstairs or if I'm running or whatever the case may be even walking the way that the leg lifts up is by these muscles contracting. Well, because these muscles are attaching into the front of your lower back or your lumbar spine, if those muscles tighten up, not only are they going to pull on the hips, but they're going to pull your spine forward and it causes a lot of problems in the lower back for people. All right? So you want to make sure that you know what you're working with before you start with this. Now, in addition to those muscles in the front of the hip that we call the hip flexors, the butt muscles also attach into the hip, so we want to make sure that we stretch those when we have a good hip stretching program. And also, all of the muscles in the thigh will attach into the hip as well, all right? Now, one more thing I want you to think about is that those muscles are also attaching into the knee, so if you have knee problems, these are also really good stretches for you to do because it actually can help your knees as well, all right? So we're going to be working on stretching all of those muscle groups to make sure that you get the full benefit from this. Now, there are a few rules that we have to talk about when it comes to stretching. The first rule is that you only want to stretch when you're warmed up. And what that means is, if I'm going to be doing these stretches that we're going to be teaching you today, and you're doing them when you're working out, you want to start first with the warm up, then you do your workout, and then after that is when you want to stretch. So because you've warmed up and worked out, the blood is flowing through your body, the muscles are warmed up, and now they're ready to be stretched. If you stretch a muscle when it's cold or when it's not warmed up, 
you take the chance that you're going to stretch it too far and you can actually tear muscle tissues and cause damage to that muscle. And we don't want that to happen for you. Now, if you're doing these stretches at home and you're not planning on doing them when you're working out, just take a walk for a few minutes, just enough to get the blood flowing through your body. Once you do that, now you're warmed up enough that you can do these stretches and you should be okay with them, but never just stretch without warming up first. The next rule is that when we do our stretches, you never want to bounce. I'm not even sure where that came from, but whenever we stretch, we're always going to stretch and hold. Or if Coach Dustin instructs you to do, to do a stretch over a period of time, that means that you repeat the motion at your own pace for that period of time. But we're not going to bounce when we go into our stretches. That causes damage to tissues, or it can cause damage. The next rule is if Coach Dustin tells you to stretch and hold a stretch, you're gonna hold it for 30 seconds on each side. If it's something where you need to repeat the motion for a period of time, you wanna repeat that motion for a full 60 seconds to get the full benefit from this. The final rule with stretching that you wanna follow is that you always want to stretch both sides. We never stretch just one side, even if you're only feeling pain or having a problem on that side always do both sides because we have to maintain balance within the body and this is a really really important factor that we have to keep track of or you know keep in mind the final thing i want to talk about and then he's going to teach you these stretches here real quick is what do you need at home to do these properly well it's helpful if you have a weight bench but if you don't have a weight bench don't worry about it you can use a chair or you can use your kitchen countertop as well. Any of these can be done with, with either of those things and it should work just fine for you. Now, if you're using a chair, make sure you put it up against a wall so that you don't um, lose balance or that the chair doesn't push away from you while you're doing these stretches. The next thing that you're going to need for these stretches in particular is either a long towel or a resistance band. And you'll see how he's gonna teach you how to use these if you do need them uh, just to help yourself through these stretches. All right, that's pretty much all I have to say. So I'm gonna let Coach Dustin take over now. He's gonna go ahead and teach you guys how to do these stretches properly. And I hope you find them helpful. If you do like these stretches, try to do them every single day. You'll see that if you're very consistent with them, that's when you're really going to see a big change with your hip flexibility. All right, Coach Dustin, go ahead and take it away. Okay, the heel pull. This stretches the quadriceps, or the front of the thigh. We're gonna start in a standing position. We're gonna bend one knee and we're gonna pull the heel back towards the butt. And then we're gonna repeat on the other side. You should feel this in the front of the thigh. The couch stretch stretches the quadriceps or the front of the thigh and the hip flexors. We're gonna start with the foot against the wall and slide down until the knee is on the floor with a pillow under the knee. The other leg is going to be forward and we're going to lean forward and then repeat on the other side. This can also be done at home on a couch. You should feel this in the front of the thigh, front of the hip, and in the abdomen. The split stretch stretches the hamstring muscle or back of the thigh. On these, bring one leg forward on the heel. Lean forward if you can, keeping the back straight. If you can't lean forward, that's okay. You can just stay upright. You should feel this in the back of the thighs. The pigeon pose stretches the piriformis and butt muscles. The sciatic nerve passes through the piriformis muscle, so if you suffer with sciatica, this is a good stretch to do. On the floor, bring one leg forward, into a crossed position. Keep the back leg straight and lean forward. If you aren't flexible enough, don't lean forward as far. You can also stay upright and stretch a muscle called the psoas, which is a hip flexor on the side of the straight leg. You should feel this in the butt and hip if doing this correctly. If stretching the hip flexors, you will feel it in the front of the hip and in the abdomen. The banded hamstring stretch. This stretches the hamstring, or back of the thigh, and the calf muscles. Lay on your back, place a resistance band or a towel under the front of the foot by the toes, and lift the leg up while pulling back. Repeat this on the other side. You should feel this in the calf and back of the thigh. 
The hip flexor stretch stretches the hip flexors in front of the hip and quadriceps or the front of the thighs. Start on your knees and lean back as far as you can. You can also do this with one leg at a time. You should feel this on the front of the thigh, front of the hip, and into the front of the abdomen. The figure four stretch or the piriformis stretch. This stretches the piriformis in the butt. This is the muscle the sciatic nerve passes through. So this is helpful if you suffer with sciatica. Start lying down on your back, cross one leg over the opposite knee and pull the thigh to the body. You can use a towel or resistance band under the straightened thigh to help pull the leg towards you if you need help with that. This stretch can also be done in a seated position. Always repeat on both sides and you should be able to feel this in the butt.